Uh, this just handed to me a statement that I want to read uh, as of right now. For the past 40 seasons, the Minnesota Twins have been part of our family's heart and soul. This team is woven into the fabric of our lives and the Twins community has become an extension of our family. The staff, the players, and most importantly, you, the fans. Everyone who makes up the unbelievable organization is part of that. We've never taken lightly the privilege of being stewards of the franchise. However, after months of thoughtful consideration, our family reached a decision this summer to explore selling the twins. As we enter the next phase of this process, the, pri the time is right to make this decision public. We re truly respect and cherish what the twins mean to many, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the great state of Minnesota, and this entire region. Our goal is to be as informative as possible with the team, staff, and you, the fans. You deserve this because in many ways, this team doesn't belong to any one family. It belongs to all of you. It's our objective to find an ownership group who all of us can be proud of and who will take care of the Minnesota Twins. After, after four decades of commitment, passion, and countless memories, we are looking forward towards the future with care and intention for our family, the Twins organization, and this community we love so much. Um, that, that was handed to me, that statement uh, issued by the Polad family, uh, that was handed to me Thursday morning, October 10th, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we do not know what this means for the Minnesota Twins or the fan base as we know it, but that is what we are about to tackle. Hello, friends. Welcome to the wacky world of Minnesota sports as we know it. I am Johnny Voss, along with, I believe, uh, soon-to-be northward bound Noah Storzinger. Uh, and this is the Show to Be Named Later podcast. Uh, how you doing, Noah? Boy, they dropped a bomb on us last week. A, a An atomic bomb, if you will. Uh, that was something that when I saw... I, first of all, I had no idea that was coming. No. Um, and, and I mean... the. The second I saw it on, on Twitter, I screenshot it and sent it to you. Um, and boy, was that a, 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 a just a crazy, a crazy morning. Well, and 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 here's the thing, because um, I, I did talk to one one of my friends um, who claims that he saw this coming. I'm sorry, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, but no, you didn't. Nobody saw this coming. Not in Minnesota, nationwide. I'm sorry. Nobody saw the poll ads just suddenly take taken off, right? I mean, it it, it wasn't something. You got to remember, there have only been two families who have owned this franchise since 1920. Nobody saw this coming. I, said, I saw a funny tweet that said, you know, was this the first time bullying actually worked? Did we bully the poll ads out of the Minnesota Twins? Well, that, and, and that's some of the things that I, I do want to get to because um, there, are, there are a lot of elements that play into this decision um, that the Polad family made. And, and there are just a lot of things that we need to cover. And here where I thought we were done with baseball, we're right back in the mix. That's our, our, our lead story. And we got a 5-0 and undefeated football team right now. It, it's, it's crazy. Um, now... <laughs> Same buddy that I was talking to, because I, I do want to get it because first of all, I'm going to say this out of all the, because you were the first one that gave me the information when the bomb was dropped. Um, I was at work and I, I mean, I was tickled pink. Uh, everybody that I, I, you know, I texted that same statement to a handful. No, it was like 12 or 13 people, including your father, by the way, who never got back to me. Um, and Save but one individual, one of my friends, 
who was not tickled pink as well. Everybody was dancing and doing cartwheels and everything. And one of my buddies, um, and, and I wanted to get clarification on this and I wasn't able to get back um, to him since we talked, but he went he went out and, and to me, he was so in support of Joe Polad and, and the Polad family. And I, I just, I didn't understand that. And it, it almost got to a point where it got a little spicy and, and, and I want to run it down for you because I didn't understand any of his points of, of, of the support of Joe Polad uh, particular. And, and here's what I'm going to run on. First of all, he said, <clears throat> well, I said, so what, what is it or, or why he said that he saw it coming? And the first thing that he said was, well, you know, Joe had another uh, business that I that that he claims failed miserably, um, and I didn't do the homework on it. I know that they have um, a spoon in just about every pot around in in the kitchen. Um, but he he was saying, well, you know, he's coming off a bad break on a a failed business adventure, and I was like, okay, that that's strike one right there. Then he went into it and said, well. I think that Joe was a little bit in over his head. He'd never run a major league baseball team. And I'm thinking like, okay, failed businesses, never done this before. That's got to be strike two, right? Then he brought up, well, what have the poll has really done as far as free agents? He brought up Jack Morris. He said, well, he was old. Carlos Correa, yep. <clears throat> and after that, it was pretty much done. And finally I said, hey, look, bro, I think we're on the same team here. Because every point that you're making in support of Joe Polad is why I want him the fuck out of there. So I, I didn't understand, you know, and it got to me. I disagree. I disagree, Johnny. Well, that's fine. As friends and as fans, we can disagree. But you haven't painted anything where I was just like, oh, you know, those poor Polads. They're so misunderstood. Uh, I think that they're really getting a, a you know, a, they're getting some bad press. They're getting up. I, I just don't agree. I don't agree with that statement at all. No. And it, so I believe it was a car dealership that, that had failed. If I, if I remember correctly. Um, but to me, strike three. And I mean, regardless if it was strike one, strike two, uh, strike three was, was what happened this year. I mean, he had the absolute opportunity to capture a lot of twins fans and, and, and put, something on the field that that could have been talked about for a long time because I truly think this team could have been better and something more special and something to continue to build upon. But oh my gosh, what a what a failure, failure yeah. of a season. And it's 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 enough where like, yeah, you you get fired for doing shit like that and you shouldn't own the twins anymore. So great. Get out of here. Okay. And, right. And that that brings me to, to another point, because there's so many things that I want to talk about here. Now that means, you know, because if you remember, I believe in the last year, the poll ad said, we're not going anywhere we, this is our team. We're going to do this. And now suddenly, so that means in, in his statement, he said in the last few months, that means that they were already making that decision this summer in the midst of a playoff run, a division title, perhaps a playoff run, which which only backs up the fact that this these guys were not invested in this team as a business at all because they were not thinking of this team as going any further or whatever. They're already thinking of selling in the middle of a playoff run. That's which not is why, okay. It, which is why I think you didn't see any spending or any – continued spending because you know if you're already thinking about selling you know you're not going to throw a bunch of money into the business and, and especially if it's a bad investment and now you've got you know you're not you're you're, you're not going to sell for as high as you exactly want to so um y you know quite truthfully they were as shitty as it sounds i mean they were smart not to dump a bunch of money to get the highest payday but fuck them i mean the as much of it's it's a business i mean it affects more people than than the normal the normal business i guess if that makes sense i mean it, it it's a business but it's such a lifestyle for for many people um not only in minnesota but around the country and they they fucking pissed a lot of people off well they they did and and those are things that i i mean 
like I say, I, I don't know how, once again, we're going to get through all of this stuff. Now, you know, to, to my buddy's other point about Joe Polad being in over his head, you know, I, I don't know what happened here in Minnesota. Was there a meeting here in Minnesota where suddenly a group of guys got together and, I mean, I, I'm out of it for a little bit. I wake up and everybody's got delusions of grandeur. Okay, you got one guy saying, I've never won uh, five consecutive NFL games in my life, but I'm going to be your quarterback, okay? Um, you got another guy saying, I've never run a professional baseball team, but I'm your guy. You got another guy saying, well, I've never been vice president before, but now I'm your guy, which, you know, maybe only one of those three are actually going to work out for us. Um I, I was not aware of this meeting. I mean, why was I not invited? Because I'll tell you what, uh, if I was informed of this, there's a lot of well-paying jobs that I have absolutely no experience on and that I could fuck up as well. Okay. You know, and, and so give me a job as a, um, color commentator, right? I mean, well, they tend to give those ex ball players and, you know, people are, who are in broadcasting, well, that's really not fair. That's the way that I look at this whole thing because I don't understand if Joe Polad was in over his head, why are we giving him the keys to the cabin? You know, I've won a lot of championships on MLB The Show. Does that mean I get Thad Levine's job? <laughs> right. I, I, I don't, I, I just, I, I don't understand that. And now, you know, one of the things that makes me a little upset is that, um, well, let, let's get to that in a second. Now, as giddy as I was when I, I got the news, that doesn't mean that the Twins are going to be sold in two weeks' time, okay? And that's, you know, a lot of people think that there's magic wand has been has been waved and, and now suddenly things are going to be different overnight. Here is a situation that we as Minnesota Twins fans have to have to recognize and be ready for and and it's it's not a good thing in my opinion um let's say that the sale of this team takes a year and a half to two years okay um here's the thing i i love it because mike max said that the tv revenue didn't have anything to do with the with the poll ads selling the team i'm saying i'm calling bullshit on that because they are they are counting every penny and they have proven that. And so <clears throat> to say, well, 54 mil in TV revenue is not really that big. It got nothing to do with it. Not true. Okay. And so now you have to look at the next five to 10 years. They're saying about a team without that television revenue of what? 54 mil a year, which I think the poll ads banked on and, and how that's going to look for your franchise and how that's going to look for spending money on a team, right, over the course of that. Now, a prospective buyer comes in, they're going to have to figure out how that works too. You just dropped a bunch of loot on a, on a major league baseball team, and now you're saying, well, 20 years ago, I would have been getting that money, some of that money back in TV revenue, and I can apply that to this team. A new owner is not going to be able to do that, okay, which means that once they – by the ball club, they're not going to have a lot of extra money to be thrown around for free agents. Now, on the flip side of this, if the poll ads don't find a, a potential buyer in the next year and a half or two years, they're not going to be putting any money into bringing in guys to replace uh, Sonny Gray. And so you're looking at the longer that the sale goes, the less... I guess, activity as far as free agents are making this ball club a better team, right? Yeah, you're. this is, I mean, I think Twins fans should mentally prepare. Like, I mean, the poll ads will own this team by the start of the 2025 season. They will. Yeah. Uh, like, that's just how it's going to work, um, which in turn, I mean, yeah, they're not going to spend money this winter. Don't expect them to. It's just not going to happen. Because they uh, did when they were all in as owning the team, right? right. They're not going to do it on the way out. So really what you got to hope for is, I mean, you got to hope for a sale at this point and a sale to someone that really gives a shit. Cause obviously the pull ads don't, it's a, it's a business that they, they only care about the business aspect of it. 
Um, and you know, you got to bring in someone, um, who's passionate and, and quite frankly, someone who's, who's got uh, a lot, a lot of money bags. Because, who you was know, the guy that was going to get involved with the wolves? The Michael Bloomberg who's, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. involved. That that's, uh, that's like the only way that I can see a happy ending to this story is if someone like that with that kind of money would, would buy the team. And I, you know, and, and here's my, my wishful <laughs> thinking is, you know, obviously the, the Timberwolves sale is, is still going, going on and it's going to court. Um, you know, let's say a rod and, and, and Lori don't get to buy the, the Timberwolves. Do they pivot and buy the twins? And I would be again, completely fine with that because those are people that, that care. I mean, you yeah. got a ex baseball player, a real good businessman and Lori Bloomberg. I mean, they got the money and, and they got the, the passion. So that would be my wishful thinking. Now I, I want them to buy the wolves still. I really do. But um, it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of hoping at this point. Yeah. And that, that is, it was funny because the very first day a rod's name did come up and I was like, how, how is that going to work? You know um, I, I tell you uh, this, this could go on though for several years uh, and maybe not, maybe, I mean, a lot of what I read was that there are a lot of people who want to own a, a baseball team. So it is, it, go ahead. I, sorry, I was just going to say like it, it's, there are, it, it is very lucrative right now and it's very enticing for, for people, especially um, with expansion going on and, and all of that stuff. And, um, but I mean, I, I think the sale of the Orioles only took, X amount of months. Like it really wasn't even a whole year process. It was a quick one. Um, not too long ago. So, I mean, they, they happen quick. It's not like we're expecting this to take two years. It could happen, but it could also happen really quick. Um, and there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people that are, I think, interested in buying. I read a whole article on, on potential candidates. I don't know if you've read anything. No, I, haven't, I, I haven't at all. Um, go ahead. I would just say, I mean, you're looking at the Wilf family. I've heard are, are, are interested. Uh, Mark Cuban still wants a franchise, which I don't want him. No owning the Twins, but um, you know, th there's there's a lot of uh, homegrown Minnesotan uh, billionaires out there too that I think are 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 interested. Well, and and here's the other thing about the sale of the of the team because um, I believe what I heard was. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't going to get them for 44 mil like you did in 1984. Um, I, I thought that I heard that the team is valued right now at anywhere between 1.5 and 1.7 bill, right? I heard that the poll ads already are highballing and they want at least two bill and maybe higher, you know, and, and for that, I mean, you know, and, you know, I'm ripping a lot on Joe poll ad, you know, one of the big complaints that everybody's had about the poll ads, you know, and they, they said, well, maybe it's, it's not enough to, to hate ownership that much, but they're cheap. Okay. And, you know, at least Joe got about his cheapness, honestly. I mean, it was handed down. I mean, certainly you heard the story, right? When, when, when Joe was a, a young boy, he came up to his grandfather and he said, grandpa Cal, can I have $5? And his grandfather looked down at him. And he said, $4. What do you want $3 for? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a stretch, but it, it is the case. And, you know, you brought up at the beginning of this segment about the way that they handled this year and how absolutely cheap they looked and how they, they just wanted to stick this up the, and, and did and, and went about it. I mean, if you think about everything from, you know, we're going to cut payroll, then the whole TV deal with Bally, with Diamond Sports, that was a debacle. It really showed. And so as I'm reading that statement, I'm like, well, that's great, all fine and good, that you want to put us in that boat with you, that we're all one together. But I'm sorry, I don't feel the poll ads as, you know, the, the, the father handing out pieces of bread to the children. Because I fuck out of here. I'm I'm glad that they're going to be gone. I really am. Yeah, I think the majority of Minnesota rejoiced when they saw that. Uh, they, 
again, we could just say it forever and ever and ever. I mean, this the, the Polas don't care. They did not care about Minnesota Twins baseball. Nope. Nope. And then so so that brings me to my next point because as as soon as this news came out, um just about every single local sports writer has had a column one day or the next um, about writing about how, well, this is some of this is on Minnesota twins fans because we did not reach the 2 million mark in attendance this year for the first time in a long time. And what you guys need to do is just go to the ballpark and support this team. Do you blame them? Do you really blame twins fans for going, you know what? I'm not doing it. And, and, how that's going to affect next year, regardless of who is in the ownership position. Do you really think that twins fans are going to be like, you know, because they didn't do it in the cheap pull ad way of, you know, 30 years of not spending money and just like, ah, oh, they could have put a little bit more in the way that they went about this last year, really stuck it to the twins fan base. And like I say, you want to call us a part of the family, a part of the corporation, but here's the deal. As a fan, I'm not your employee, so I can I can skip the summer picnic if I don't want to go, all right? If there is another company or another business that looks better on paper, then guess what? You're And then you're going to tell me, oh, wait a minute, you have to work Christmas Day, but you're not going to get time and a half. You're going to make even less than what you make on a normal day. Basically, that's what they were telling Twins fans. So we don't have to because we're not your employees, Mr. Polat. No, I, you know, that's where the hell do you get or do you uh, like it was a good, good season for up until, you know, six weeks. Um, but you obviously felt there, there was something that they just didn't care. And why would I in turn return or, you know, gift you my attendance when your, 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 your care for, for the business has gone down? Why am I go, why am I rewarding you yep. with my attendance to the ballpark forever? I saw so many twins fans that said, you know, we gotta, we, we really gotta stick it to the poll ads and show them, Hey, like figure it out. And, you know, we got to stop going to the ballpark and people still went and went and went. And th I think this year was definitely the year where Minnesota fans who are nice as hell still said, fuck that. We're not going because it, it's just not, not what we expected. So, well, and, and another thing is that, uh, you know, like I, I'm a big St. Louis Cardinals fan. They, uh, I believe is the first time in 20 some years that they did not reach 3 million in attendance. And that's because of the product that you put on the field. Now, I can get away with it. You know, if people are just fickle and, oh, you, you don't go to the ballpark because the, the team's not winning. Well, then you're not a real fan anyways. But it, it was the way that it was handled um, by ownership. And, and you brought up something uh, also at the beginning that I got to wonder about. Like, you know, I, I go on the fact that I think that they're cheap as hell and that's the only thing that they're rolling on right now is they don't want to put up with this for another 10 years. However, this has probably been the most New York that Minnesota has gotten as far as the media and the fans about saying, you know what, you bent us over and you, you told us to enjoy it. Um, I, I don't know if I've seen such a backlash like this from the Minnesota media and, and, and our fan base together working hand in hand and saying, boy, the poll ads really screwed this up. That being said, like you said, were, were they bullied out of it where they were just like, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Minnesota nice. We don't say anything at the ballpark. We don't say, Hey, you cheap ass, get out of here. However, there was so much bad press that you wonder if they were just like, not we're, you know, we, we might as well get out of it or it's going to be like Norm Green where we can't even show our face in public any longer. Yeah. It, you know, it's just, it's, it's years and years and years, decades truly of, of, of pent up 
anger and aggression at the pole ads. And that's where, like I said, I think the bullying worked. I truly do. Well, uh, I'm, I'm all for it as long as, and like I say, I, I, I'm curious to see how this is going to work down the road and what that's going to mean for our players as well as our fan base, because um, we do have things on the horizon as far as guys that you're going to need to sign. And it, it's going to be interesting. And, and, you know, if, if the poll ads are getting nothing but negative press and they have to hold on to this team for two more years, you almost think that they would be vindictive because they got a business to run. So you would almost think that they would make moves. Now you would hope they're professional so they wouldn't do something like that, but to just go, you know what? Fuck you, Minnesota. Th this is what we're going to leave. We're just going to burn this, th this, this team to the ground and then see where you're at. I mean, with the payroll situation already, I mean, so I just read an article today about, you know, e even with, we're not going to cut payroll. Um, I mean, you're going to have to just with all the, the arbitration raises and all, all the salary yep. increases and everything. And I saw stuff that's like, do you trade Joe Ryan and Bailey over? Cause they're, they're getting, they're going to get up there in, in, in salary. And it's, who are you going to have to, who are you going to trade this year? Because it's going to be some folks that you're trading. Um, and do you sell high on, on a Joe Ryan and Bailey over? And that's, that's what's scary about this is, there's going to be some good players that are going to be shipped out because of this. Well, and then that, that brings me to, to something that we had said for quite a while on, on this, on this program. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to say it again, you know, your job as the owner of this team, if you are truly interested in winning is to get better. So you go from winning a playoff series to next year winning two or maybe getting to the world series. And now you are talking about, I hope not, but I mean, that could be on the horizon where it is a complete rebuild reboot for the next five years. And that's all on the poll ads doorstep. Every single piece of that is on their doorstep. Yeah. I mean, the, you'll, you'll completely lose. I mean, if you, if you completely sell off, you're, you're going to lose a lot of fans. I mean, you you have completely alienated a lot already, but I mean, if, if it turns into a rebuild, I, I mean, like this team is good. This is a good baseball team. It truly is. But, but if you, if you rebuild at this point, I mean, that is, that is not a good look. No, no. And uh, I mean, to me, the last year has seemed more like a soap opera than 30 years of watching this team. You know what I mean? And I, I've just never seen that. Uh, Minnesota is, is really not cutthroat like that, but that's, that's what is, what has come to pretty much. Like I said, I think it's, it's pent up anger from, I mean, the, the media for sure has just been going. It was crazy this year. Uh, when you talk about like the New York esque media. And I mean, I think it's just, pent up anger at this point uh you know from it's like it's like if i started a a blog or or a, or a sports page i mean i'd be calling people out if i had to watch i mean i've watched it for for this long now and i mean what do you expect at this point right and we are not ones to uh to watch our words here on the show to be named later podcast because the bottom line is you want what's best for minnesota sports right I mean, that, that's, that is, and, and, and the poll ads have made it very, very clear and almost in your face that we don't want what's best for Minnesota sports. No. And, and well, that's my favorite part about this show is we're not, we're not media. It's, it's, yep. it's fans with a camera and that is what we do. And that's where it's going to be a little different than media. Like we will tell you, this is what we're feeling. And this is, we just, now we have, we have a platform we can show people. So that's what they Absolutely. get. Really, I love it. I love it. All right. We're going to move on. All right. Now we're going to switch, switch gears here to another uh, Minnesota team. And, and I got to tell you, man, like, boy, it, it feels great to be five and oh, but what a year to be five and oh, man. And, and what I mean by that is I believe since 2002, no NFL division or NFL division, 
in week six has had all four teams with four wins or more, every single team. And, and so, I mean, it, it's bittersweet to me because I, I remember, you know, when we're on kind of the bubble on the outside looking in and let's say that the Packers are five and oh, and we're like, oh, we just need them to lose one game, man. And, you know, and maybe we'll get one and then we'll see them, you know, on the schedule in a couple of weeks and we'll get back into this race. Everyone's in the race right now. And, and that I, I feel a little cheated by that because here we have this incredible journey that is just kind of started. We didn't, we didn't think was going to happen and all the best teams are in our division. There's a legitimate, legitimate chance that all four NFC North teams are, are in the playoffs. Now, we, well, I'm waiting on Chicago yet because they have not played anybody. Of no. And, and, and here's the thing. If you look at strength of schedule, um, the Vikings are, have had the fifth hardest schedule in the NFL so far. Uh, I believe the next closest was like the Lions and at 26. I mean, like the Bears have had one of the easiest schedules. The Packers yeah. have had one of the easiest schedules. So we're beating the good teams. The, the rest of our division is just beating the teams they should beat. Um, right. And, and so our, the tough part of our schedule was definitely in the beginning of the season. I mean, we're going to see some of those same teams that the Packers – the Lions and the Bears have been beating up on, but I'll tell you what, man, going in to, uh, to our week six coming out of the bye, uh, this weekend is, th th these are big boy games coming up because the Packers have Houston at home. And we of course have the Detroit Lions minus Mr. Hutchinson. I feel bad about that because I, I, I want my opponent to be at their full strength, have their best players. And, and I really like Hutchinson as a stud dude. Um, but there, and did you see the, the snap of the ink? Oh, that was just brutal. Yeah. Um, I do have some information that was, uh, just came out. We, we have a trade to announce. Yes. I, I know that, uh, some of my buddies were very pleased and I will tell you what I think of that, but go ahead. You're you, I, I gave the first statement. Yeah. So, uh, I think it was as of like 20 minutes ago, uh, the Vikings traded for Cam Akers. <laughs> Welcome right. back, Cam we Akers, um, <laughs> for a conditional sixth, and we got a conditional seventh for 2026, so not even next year. Um, you know, it's – I don't mind it. I think I saw I – I saw some bigger running back uh, options that I think I would have enjoyed as some insurance for, for Jones, who is supposed to play. Uh, example. Give me an example of, of who, who else was out there that you would have wanted us to, to go after. Um, you know, it, well, so it depends. Um, Cause I probably would have waited a week to see where we're, where we were at after week six. Um, Cause I mean, if, if you are going all in, like, do you go all in and go get, Chubb, or do you go to um, who's the Jacksonville's running back that's not playing as much anymore? It, it I can't say his last name, Atini, Atini. Um, I mean, Latavius Murray's still a free agent, we could have just signed him up. Um, you know, Cam Akers provides uh, I, I like Cam Akers, I do. Um, yeah. I don't know how different he is from a, from a tight Chandler as much, but, um, but I like him better than Chandler. Uh, th this was the only concern that I had because I, I was given that information um, just a few minutes before we started. Um, we started recording and the only concern I have, I mean, I, I don't mind that they, they got cam acres and um, you know, he, he knows our system. Um, so that's helpful as well. But, that makes me nervous about Aaron Jones and his health. And, and okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I mean, it, it does, but to me, it doesn't. I think it, it very much looks like he's going to play against Detroit. And I, again, I think after the London game, it was very evident that as much as Darnold, as good as Darnold has been, you know, a, a, a KOC offense has relied like 70% passing and it's just been tough on, on quarterbacks. 
that maybe aren't Kirk Cousins. Um, and and you just saw how how much the offense sputtered after Jones went down. Yep. It just adds a different aspect. And I think that it was very evident you needed to go get some insurance. And they felt that maybe you didn't need to go all in and go get a, a star running back. Um, but you got somewhat of a, a decent insurance piece for, you know, if Jones gets hurt again. Right. Um, and that, I guess, because Aaron Jones is oft injured, correct? Like throughout his career. Um, yeah. That was so evident uh, in their game against the Jets. As soon as Aaron Jones um, left the ball, the ball game, it was night and day as far as our offense. Um, and, it's been like that a couple second halves, you know, two weeks in a row um, with this team and Darnold starting to show that he is human, which we we knew he would. That's what worries me, though, is that, I mean, I know Aaron Jones practiced yesterday, and I don't know if that was just to, to see where he's at. You think that he's going to be ready for Sunday? Is that, is that right? From what I've seen, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean – not what a better time or better timing to get the bye week in. Uh, yeah. So he had two weeks to, to really recover um, because yeah, I mean, you saw, you saw how much he, his, his absence impacted the game. And um, I mean, I'll give it, the jets had a great defense. They, they really yeah, do. They really so, do. But that was, and I think Darnold, uh, he really wasn't the same after he got hit. If you remember I, yeah. right in the ribs. So, you know, and I didn't see any that he was an injury concern or, or whatever, but you know, I mean, I, th I like to think that played a, a, a bit of it be, uh, to, to some of those passes. I mean, he was overthrowing some guys quite a bit um, yeah. or, or under throwing, I mean, just didn't look the same. So I don't know. That was just my. Right. My I mean, if, I, I, I think that we go, as far as Aaron Jones does, because this team is completely different and it, it doesn't really maybe show us that the Vikings had a lot of faith in Chandler being able to, to, uh, to take the load if Aaron Jones is hurt. But I mean, think about this. If, if this team still had Alexander Madison as their, their starting running back, I don't think that you're even close to five and all. I think that even with this defense and, and so Aaron Jones has definitely brought something like if you have a great defense, then you might be able to get away with your offense only producing a couple of touchdowns during the course of the game because your defense is going to do everything else. Um, but that is a concern because with, without that running game that puts so much more pressure on Darnold and it, it, it is shown in the last two weeks. Now, what I will say about the last two weeks, because in my opinion, we should have beat every team this year by at least three scores. But my deal is, yeah, the Jets game and the Packers game got way too close for comfort at the end. But historically, those are games the Vikings would have lost, period. That That's all there is to it. They would have lost in Green Bay, and they would have lost to the Jets. And, you know, when the Jets were driving, of course, it was all in the back of our minds. Oh, we're going to lose by one point because that's what we do. And nope, we got a guy by the name of Gilmore on our team that can still make plays. And fuck Aaron Rodgers, man. He can't <laughs> even, he can't even be, when he thinks that he's being, he can't even, he just proves himself. So when uh, Rip Van Ginkle got his interception for a pick six again, I believe only the fifth player ever to, intercept Aaron Rodgers for a touchdown. And what does Rodgers say? He can't just say, man, that was a nice play. Oh, Christmas came early. You got an early Christmas present. Fuck out of here. You know, I mean, the fact that Rip Van Ginkle, who I believe was in the movie Sleepy Hollow, he did that twice this year. Same deal where he shows blitz, falls back, and you never saw him coming, Al Pacino. Well, he did that with Miami, I think, last year as well. So, I mean, it, it's a it's a patented Van Ginkle move at this point. Um, and you see Aaron Rodgers' pussy-ass injury uh, going to the blue tent. Uh, he was going to call it a game. He absolutely right. was going to call it a game when we when we had that stupid uh, 
uh, roughing the, the kicker pe penalty or whatever. Um, and and how they come they never back. showed that replay until because well after the NFL plus broadcast or whatever was, was absolutely atrocious. It, it, yep. It's like TBS and, and baseball. It, it, it was this, it was so bad, so bad. And um, all they did, we noticed uh, the last 18 minutes of the game, the announcers cheering uh, for the jets and Aaron Rodgers. It was, it was, it made me sick to my stomach. It really did. Yeah. It was, it was blatant. Like I can't remember who was announcing. Um, was it, but, was it Kurt Warner? He was the, he was better than, than his counterpart who was the, the main guy. I can't remember his name, but I mean, even after Gilmore's interception and it's intercepted. Yeah. And that is the game. Like, come on. That was, but you know, uh, I'll say this to, to your point with, uh, with Aaron Jones. Um, I'm looking, he's got 350 yards right now through five, four and a half games. I'd say, I mean, I don't have the number, but how many yards do you think Madison had through, through five games last year? Yep. It, it wasn't even, it was oh. not close to 350. No touchdown. Um, no. And, and so it just adds a whole nother aspect to the offense. And then, and then, you know, when you add Hawkinson back in here, I mean, there are so many weapons uh, yep. that, that Darnold can go to, which I think, like you said, I mean, you absolutely want a, a really good quarterback, but when you have is the the weapons that that Darnold has, he doesn't need to be this this stud all star. I mean, he 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 really doesn't have to do that much. He's got so many so much to work with. And I, I will say I was disappointed because, you know, they hyped Hawkinson, um, I believe, made the trip to London, and they said he looked like he was in phenomenal shape and blah, blah, blah. And I really wanted him back for this this game against Detroit. Um, so that was a little disappointing to me. Now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not that conspiracy theory guy, um, but I, I wonder what your thoughts were because uh, I, I guess I was – I was another surprise that I had over uh, this last week. So we're watching the Jets game and I picked up on it right away. I said, uh, I think like four minutes into the game, I'm like, Oh, Robert Sala, you know, the head coach of the Jets. I said, he's wearing a Lebanon flag on his, on his, on his Jets merchandise there, which I don't care. I really don't care, man. His family's from there and that's fine. You're showing your support. But I did make that point, and everyone really though is that Lebanon? Yep, yep, yep. And he got fired the very next day. And and the reason I'm surprised by this is they were only two and three, and they only had a two game losing streak going. I guess I was really surprised. Um, you know, and they the the press have been trying to stir up shit between him and Aaron Rodgers. I think in the last couple of weeks. But I was surprised that you fire a coach that's two and three, um, you know, so early in the year. As much as the media stirred it up, it was absolutely because of Aaron Rodgers. It, it, it like, I think Robert Sala is a good coach. I mean, I think he can he can coach a hell of a defense, and he will, I think, be a defensive coordinator next year for sure. Um, but I, I mean they did not get along. Like you could, you could see it. Um, Roger, it, to me, it's like when LeBron is coaching your, your, or Le, when LeBron's on your team, I mean, if you, if you're not winning with, with Rogers, like someone's getting fired and I, he was, he was obviously that guy. And I think it was enough where, cause they just traded for Devonte Adams too, yeah, uh, uh, you know? And um, so obviously they think they can still make something out of, out of this season. And I, I think they absolutely can. I mean, but it, that was a stretch to me. Well, and considering that Rodgers is now still only played five games for the New York Jets in his career, like to have that guy calling the shots, and he claimed it was not his call, and then he had nothing to do with it. But we all know Aaron Rodgers, and and uh, I don't know. I I I'm and I'm hoping that it didn't have anything to do with his choice of apparel on the sidelines um on sunday no i don't think it did i think a lot of people wanted to believe that it did but no i don't right. i don't believe so because he's i think he's out he's been very out outwardly spoken about about that so i don't think it had okay. anything to do with it 
Well, and and based on, you know, we talked about the, you know, the powerhouse division, uh, the uh, the NFC Norris division, um, you know, and and I'll, I'll tell you this. And, and first of all, I'll say this. I, I talked about going to the game at Lambeau and man, I love, I, I love that, that atmosphere. And I, I do love Packers fans, but here's what I don't love. Okay. Um, with everybody having at least four wins, you know, the thing that really sticks in my crop, um, everywhere I go here in the state that I live in, you know, you got, you meet somebody and like, Oh no, me and the wifey, you know, we moved from Verroco. That's the Cooley region there down by La Crosse. And we, me and the wifey been here about 10 years, but oh, we're, we're Packer backers through and through. We're, we're Wisconsin through and through. And yet you, yet you, you live here. Then at my job, I got, I'd say one in every three people that come in and like, no, nah, man, I'm Chicago through and through, man. You feel me? I'm through and through Chicago, man. No, nah, but I have been here about 25 years. You know what? You know what my deal is? Go home. All right. Go shit in your own backyard. I'm tired of it. I, I've lived here my whole life and I don't know of anybody that's, well, you know, we're going to move to Beaver Dam, uh, Wisconsin, because we just thought, you know, a, a change of pace, you know, or any, anyone's going to go to Arlington Heights. Or we're going to try the Illinois thing for a while. You don't hear that. And yes, I'm not picking on Detroit Lions fans because I've only met one since, you know, the epiphany that this is the best team in the NFL right now. She was a nurse at Southdale, her and her husband. She went to Michigan State. He went to Michigan. So I'm going to give them a break on that. But everybody else, go to fuck home. Now, if I had been in Kansas City for 25 years and was still repping the Twins, would you have said the same thing? No, and I'll tell you why. The, the, the difference is I'm moving back, but, but but you know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, now, let's get this straight. My parents, both from Wisconsin. My mom's from La Crosse. My, my dad's from Funnel All right, but here's the thing. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not, I, I would not crucify you living in KC for 25 years and still being a Minnesota guy. When my parents moved to Minnesota, they had all their kids. Well, Katie Dumel and had she, I think she was born and brought over. But your mom, myself, we were born here in Minnesota. And my parents converted. Okay, now this, these are people that watched two Green Bay Packer Super Bowls, the very first Super Bowls ever. All right. And my mom, as she told me, she said, when we decided to have kids here, we were not going to have everybody hating our children because they're going to be Packer fans. And, you know, I don't know if it would have taken for me anyways. Um, but both my parents converted to the Minnesota way. Now, that being said, it's so ingrained in me that if I moved to Las Vegas or I moved to Denver, all right. I've got 50 some years of my parents making sure that I was a Vikings twins, North stars, wild uh, Timberwolves gophers fan through and through. So no move anywhere is going to stop that for me. Okay. Um, my point is why are there so many interlopers living in our state? That's what I'm saying. Like, how many people in Kansas City do you know that were born in Minnesota? Any? Uh, no. Okay. So that that's my whole point. And, and I love the fact that you back your team wherever you are. I'm not ripping on them for being Packers fans or Bears fans or whatever. But shoot, man, you, you have to pick Minnesota? I don't get it. <laughs> no, I think a lot of it too, though, is uh... – when t like when teams get good, fake fans are born, and it it happens quite a bit. So uh, the Packers have been good for a long time. I think there are a lot of fake Packer fans in Minnesota. I think uh, I don't know how you can be a fake Bears fan, but um, I don't know how you can be a Bears fan. Period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, anything else NFL wise for for you? Uh, you got a prediction? Week week six here mm -hmm. coming up. 
Ah, oh, this is hard. And once it once again, if we lose on Sunday, I'm still not going to be disappointed in in this team. Um, this, like I say, this is a big boy game, and if you were a football fan, to me, this would be a treat because you have maybe the best offense in the game going against maybe the best. I know they're third, but I was going to say maybe the best defense. I mean, this is going to be a chess match through and through. I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that our defense and our crowd, and I hope Sam Darnold has had a good two weeks off. I mean, I say, I, I think we're actually favored by two and a half. We are. I'm going to say 24, Minnesota Vikings 27. I was going to say the exact same thing. No the way. The exact same thing. I absolutely was. So wow. Three point game. It, it, I think it'll be a three point game. I think yeah. that it'll come down to the wire. We'll all get heart attacks. Uh, maybe, maybe will the thrill kicks us into the to to the win column? But we'll see. Awesome. Awesome. Um, like and like I say, you know, I mean, if you lose, because I don't think there's anybody that thinks we're going to go seventeen or no this year. We're going to lose eventually. I think that our schedule after Detroit is very favorable. Um, and, and, and we can go from there. I mean, I, I'm not ready to crown the Detroit Lions. I, I still feel that you have to take it away from us and we're playing at home with a rowdy ass crowd that should get on. I mean, Jared Goff is playing really good football right now. And that offense is looking good with their trick plays. And, um, interestingly enough, I watched the Detroit Dallas game and I'm so sick of the Dallas Cowboys and why anyone in the national media thinks that we are so enamored by the Dallas Cowboys, a shitty ass team. And here as it's, I don't know there, it was 40 something to nine. And I'm like, give us another game. When are they going to switch? Oh no, it was the game of the week. Or maybe people were so happy to see Dallas get its ass kicked again that they're like, no, we're, we're going to let this roll. We're going to we're going to let everybody see what a paper tiger the Dallas Cowboys are. Oh yeah, I've never I've I've never I've never been threatened ever by the Dallas Cowboys. That team always just seems so so fake to me. Um and yeah, it was it was as much as I didn't like the Lions winning, I, I still it was it was funny. It, it it was especially at the end when they're up like forty to nine or whatever, and they run that trick play and, and get a touchdown off of it. I mean that at that point they're just fucking with them. I mean yeah, it was on Jerry, so birth, on Jerry Jones' birthday. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Um, um, go ahead. Well, so I was gonna say, you know, you you alluded to the seventeen and zero because I think there are fans out there that truly believe this team is going to go 17 and 0 and they need to pump the brakes and but I will say every every good team because I think this team truthfully can do damage in the playoffs um and 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 every team like that goes through cycles um and and waves of a season and there are two things that still need to happen um they need to have a bad loss and I mean a bad yep bad loss and it's 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 gonna happen um and then they need to so i should say a like bad the loss. Dallas lost when you got married remember that <laughs> yeah yeah i know the day of yeah um a bad loss and then a loss to a bad team and then a close a, a very like a a razor thin uh loss so i think there are to me those are the three things that happen i think um you know you can give or take one of those but um, I think it's coming and I, I think that, that Vikings fans should at least mentally prepare, um, yeah. for, for stuff like that to happen. So, and not overreact, but right, I agree. I agree with that statement. Now, here's the other thing though, is that I don't want too many losses though, because I really feel like this year, it, it just feels different on the home field advantage that you want in the playoffs. 
when we played the Giants two years ago, obviously I thought we were going to beat the Giants at home. But I really believe that the Vikings have a home field advantage playing at the Bank Stadium. I, I really, it, it's the energy and how loud it is just feels different. It's always been loud there. But there's times in the third quarter that oh, people are yawning a little bit and they're not, you know, they didn't get to their seats back from halftime right away. And it just feels different, the energy in that building. And so I want the playoffs to have to run through Minnesota for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's lined up that way. I mean, it's now it's still close, but um, but man, a, a, that a one seed with a bye would be uh, quite impressive for, especially if, like you said, like us going in really not having any expectations for this team. Like it's still just been so fun to just watch football, and now you're starting to care a little bit, obviously, now that you're five and zero. But um, but man, that would be uh, quite the story. Okay, last question, NFL-related. Why are the Kansas – I know they won the Super Bowl. Why are they on national TV every single week? Every week? Because of one little lady. No. No. Do you know how big it is, especially down here, uh, the, the whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. I mean, the Chiefs. They're they are. There is a uh, on on Bravo channel. They are doing a reality series of the wives, uh, the wives and girlfriends of the Kansas City Chiefs players. And I will say, um, for everyone that complained about the New England Patriots dynasty, that one wasn't too bad. Now, was it? After right. seeing this bullshit. I'm kind of getting tired of it. Um, I will say this. The only two undefeated teams left in the NFL are the Kansas City Chiefs and the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I hope it does not change for one, at least one of those teams. But uh, all right. Uh, so we're going with a three-point win on Sunday in the big boy game? I think so. All right, man. Uh, next, Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh <laughs> You didn't happen to see the Knicks game the other night, did you? Well, I didn't watch it, but oh boy, did I see those highlights. Now, I got to say, man, I, I got to tell you, that I, I put no stock in preseason games in any sport. That was the first NBA preseason game that I ever watched that felt like a regular season game or even, dare I say, closer to a playoff game. I, I mean... It had some some guts to it for a preseason game, man. Let me say this. Uh, for all those Minnesota fans that loved Patrick Beverly, Dante DiVincenzo is becoming a favorite. Yep. Um, and boy, am I already – I'm sold. I am so Dude. sold. Let's get, let's get to Dante right now because, and first of all, I'll say, man, you go preseason – didn't look like Edwards counted it as a preseason game. I love it when guys, what, they're going to drop 28 points in a preseason game. In, all right. Um, so first things I, I want to be, because I want to point out the Dante, why it felt like it was a regular season game. First of all, Dante took it as no. And, and, you know, I don't know if there's bad blood or not, but he went at it twice. Once when he got fouled and he gets to the, to the free throw line, and apparently he was yelling, uh, oh, can't finish, huh, Tibbs? Can't finish, can't finish. Now, he came back and said, no, it had nothing to do with the trade. It was just playful jabbing, okay? But it didn't get playful after that. Now, his best friend, his words, not mine, his best friend is Jalen Brunson, right? He said he's he's my brother, but he had something to say to pops on the sideline. Now, Brunson's father, Rick Brunson, who is a former Timberwolves assistant, and I forgot this about this when I was reading the article. Brunson got let go from the Wolves for inappropriate behavior. What was that? Do you remember? I don't remember. I think it was in like 2018, 2017 or something like that. Um, 
or or maybe a little earlier because I remember I think Brunson had just gotten drafted or so, or or was right about to get drafted or something. Um, but no, I'd have to go back and and read it. But yeah, I think there were some some allegations or something. Okay, so apparently they got to the free throw line again or something, and Dante started started up with Rick Brunson on on the sideline, and it even carried over till the end of the game. After the game, and guys are shaking hands, here Towns and Edwards are exchanging jerseys, and Dante and Brunson are still going. They had to be separated. Um, and <clears throat> I love it. His son came out, and he was like, nope, that's between my dad and, and Dante. has got nothing to do with us. They're adults. They can deal with it. He didn't take sides. He didn't say, I got my dad's back. I got my best friend's back. Um, but to me, I was like, ah, there's a little bit of fire there. I like that. There, there's like when when New York comes here. Obviously, it's going to be, uh, I think, an emotional game for a lot of people just with Towns coming back. And I, but I think going to New York is going to be a a, a dog fight um, because it, I mean, you got to remember, like this happened like two weeks ago. I like this trade. Yeah. Like it is, it is absolutely like. The, these guys were ready to play for their respective teams for yeah. this season, and all it all changed super quick. And now it's already, hey, we're playing against each other. Right. So you know, it, and I, not that I don't. I mean, I think Dante probably didn't want to get traded. If I had to guess, um, right. I think he likes Minnesota for sure. But um, I mean, it was probably the best case scenario where to get traded. But but yeah, I mean, if 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 I got traded like that i'd probably say some shit well and i think the words that he said was uh see what happens when you let someone run the organization and i think he was referring to brunson um it it, it is weird because i think jewish randall brought it up or maybe it was dante who said you know i got i got to come home and and stay at my house you know for a couple days but it it didn't feel because because i I went to, to the visitor's locker room when I got to Madison Square Garden. He's like, I got to be home, but it didn't really feel like home. Um, so that was interesting. Now, uh, one of the points I wanted to bring up with Towns, you know, I know he's from there, um, you know, and everyone must think that I, I was this huge Towns dick rider. Not. As I was watching that preseason game and I was watching him turn the ball over on the drive, um, <laughs> You know, I mean, those are things that I'm not not going to miss at all. I just wonder, is he going to be able to cope with, because the New York press is going to be a lot harder than Minnesota. I mean, are, are we seeing the end of Carl Anthony Towns? Because he's fragile. He's very fragile. He he breaks and, and gets this, oh, poor me kind of deal when things aren't going his way. If things aren't going his way, because there are a lot of people that are looking at him as, being the scoring guy in New York. If that doesn't work out, is he going to be able to, you know, to play basketball with people being so mean to him? I mean, I, I think it'll, it's not going to happen this year. I think it'll take a little bit for him to get used to it. Um, but I will say, I don't know if you've noticed, but his whistle is completely different and it's, it's strictly New York. I mean, this guy is getting fouled uh, on on plays that you're like, well, that was an offensive foul four out of five times when he did that for the for the Wolves. Um, he's going to the line significantly more. I, mean, I know it's preseason, but I'm curious to see what that looks like during the regular season. Okay, now let's get back to Dante because one thing that I I do like and everybody is talking about right now um, now. Did he, he start out in Golden State? Is that right? I think so, yeah. So they were talking about <clears throat> his ability to move without the basketball. And it was something that he learned in Golden State, which I'm hoping is going to be infectious uh, with this team. The whole, you know, and that was the whole thing with Jade McDaniels, getting him involved offensively. And perhaps that might be the case based on what Dante's already shown us in, in a couple preseason games of moving without the basketball, constantly moving on the floor instead of, you know, you'd watch Jaden McDaniels in the corner or on the wing 
standing still waiting for the ball and then how 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 am i going to get to the basket instead of doing what dante did now apparently his influence in the locker room like everybody loves this guy as well not only can he shoot the three pointer but his his demeanor is supposedly rubbing off on a lot of these guys um that that might be the steal of that trade right there. Well, and that's and that's why they they went along with that trade because I I know you know the 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 towns trade was was supposed to happen I think a long time ago uh, yeah. and they had talked to New York for a while and it was I think originally probably I, I believe a, a a Randall Towns swap um, maybe some salary filler in there and the first round pick and they said no rightfully so um, and then they finally agreed to it when they added Dante in there. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, it, he's, he's, that's a guy you want playing, uh, you know, 26, 30 minutes a game um, just for that. And I do have to correct myself. He started in Milwaukee uh, for four years, went to the Kings, Golden State, then New York, okay. now us. So four teams in four different years. Um, but hopefully he can uh, have a little bit of a career here. Um but no, he's he's absolutely the, the steal. Well, and I I heard that you know this this might affect. Obviously, I brought up Jade McDaniel. Even Nas Reed can sometimes be left out on an island, you know, where he kind of every once in a while he gets a little stagnant or whatever. Maybe that. And I'm thinking that Dante's uh, minutes go up this year. I, I I really do believe that, and I I think you're going to see him um, at the one quite a bit. Uh, in 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 Conley's and and giving Conley a good rest on the bench and not having to go oh we got to rush him back out there because our offense breaks down when Mike Conley's not out there running. Yeah, I think I think Dante will absolutely run the back of one for the most part. But I think the the fun part is you can play a lot of these guys at so many different positions and and really interchange things. Um, a thing I thought that you know I thought was really interesting that he said. Uh, maybe two games ago was talking about moving the ball versus some ISO offense. Um, and believe it or not, he said, you know, we want to play both. Um, you know, you, you, you want to get to a point where you're consistently moving the ball, moving the ball, moving the ball. Um, but you also want to have that side of the game where there's some little ISO play with a Julius Randall with an Anthony Edwards. Um, Cause when you get to the postseason you know, teams can take that away. Um, and it's good to be able to have both. And I thought that was just a, just a smart IQ basketball player thinking right there. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, no. And, and that's, that's what I'm, I'm saying is that, you know, it, it's one player, obviously, but if that becomes infectious within the locker room, um, I think, the coaches have been very pleased with what he's and remember it's only been two weeks or whatever it is. Um, but I can't go back because originally we went with the prediction and I, I said that they wouldn't get out of the first round. I'm, I'm slowly coming to your side, Noah. And I, I think everybody else. Um, but I, I, I can't take that back. I said, they're not going to get out of the first round. I gotta, I gotta stick with it. Um, but I definitely am getting, excited about because before baseball season was still going on and the Vikings started out so hot and I'm like, man, I'm just not ready for basketball yet. I think I'm getting around that, that corner and I I'm, I'm getting very, very excited for Timberwolves basketball. I think we saw in these preseason games, how good this offense can be. Um, and you haven't even added a 28 point per game score in, in, in Julius Randall. So well, um, no. you know, this is the, the, I think this is still a, a better team than it was last year. I think it takes some time to gel. Um, but, but it, it's gonna be fun to watch. All right, man. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave and uh, leave, leave on this note because there's another whole segment I want to get into, but I see that we've already gone over the hour mark. And I, I, I know that this will take a longer, so, and we got time because 
The series is tied right now. The WNBA series is tied at one game apiece. But there are some things that are troubling to me that I was hoping that you could um, help me try to figure out about the links and about WNBA and all that stuff. But I, I just don't think there's enough time right now. But this is what I want to leave everybody with and, you know, why we do the show, why I'm such a an, an oddball. Tell you what, Noam, Sunday morning, I got up at around 8 o'clock in the morning. First thing that I did, boom, Chicago Bears NFL football game started at 8 a.m., right? <clears throat> By noon, it was uh, it was uh, it was Green Bay. They were playing. Then the Lynx, I think, started at two o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then the Lions and Cowboys were on at three o'clock. Then the Timberwolves preseason was at five, as well as the Wild, who we haven't even touched upon. And then you had the seven o'clock game as well. I watched sports and a lot of them. Not just one area. It wasn't just football Sunday for me. I watched every sport that you could think from 8 a.m. till about midnight on Sunday. Life is good, baby. I love it. And that's oh, yeah. why we do what we do here, man. Because here I thought going coming out, well, what are we going to talk about, Noel? Coming out of a bye week, there's not really a lot. And it's preseason basketball. We haven't really got into the wild because we don't know that much about it. We had a lot to talk about, and that's why I love watching sports, man, because it is constantly there for for us to go, now what would you think about that? We could take a whole year off and have so much shit to talk about because headlines are, are every day. I mean, especially when we're blessed to have, you know, a lot of major teams in our, in our market, not, I mean, in Minnesota, but, but even nationally, man, I mean, there's so, so much to talk about. So. Okay. Um, well, last two, two items now. Um, well, first of all, cause we both made reference to this, but what are you Cinderella? You're coming home. Is that, is that the deal? Yep. Uh, making our way back home. Um, yeah. So leaving Kansas city and, uh, Coming back, it'll be a good time. How, now, what's uh, what's the uh, the ETA on something like that? When when's the move coming back? I'm um, still trying to work out some details. Um, my wife will be back in November, and I probably will be back in end of the year January. Um, but yeah, still trying to work out kind of those those details. But uh, it means I think a lot more for the show to be named later, being able right. to do a lot more. Maybe not this format uh, at all or very much, um, which is really exciting. Okay, man. That's great. All right. And finally, and I'm going to have to, I, I have to do it, man. Um, you got a little Johnny Voss thing going there on the end of your chin? Is, or is that the lighting? Is that bad? Or what, what's going on there, man? No, uh, I finally became a real boy. Uh, and um, No, but hey, I, I will say... Um, People are digging it, and I feel really good about it. So okay, well, you got to learn uh, how to crawl before you can run, there, buddy. So you know, take take it in stride. That's all right, man. Looks yeah, good. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you want to say before uh, we, we take off here? No, let's get some wins. All right, man. Uh, we got a big one this weekend, boys and girls, and whatever. Please tune in. The Vikings will need your support. For Noah Storzinger, uh, who is not going to be in Kansas City very much longer, I'm Johnny Voss. You've been watching the Show to Be Named Later podcast. We will see you next time at 6 and 0. Oh.